Welcome everyone. Today is March 17th, 2021. Welcome to the Granby Board of Education uh, regular board meeting. Uh, welcome to those of us who are both joining us in person and online. A special welcome to Dr. Mack and the kids from Wells Road School who will be presenting tonight um, in the schools in the spotlight. If I forget to dismiss you after you present, you are free to leave, but I always forget, but I just want to put that caveat out there. Reminder to our Board of Ed that um, we will have no meeting on April 7th. Uh, our next scheduled board meeting will be on May, um, excuse me, April 21st. Um, Dr. Grossman will also be reviewing the budget calendar, I'm sure, uh, that is coming up in April. And just a thank you, and I'm sure people have seen a lot of uh, COVID cases letters coming out uh, regarding uh, positive cases in schools. And just to thank everyone and for your, your diligence. And just a reminder, we're not out of the woods yet. Uh, and, and thank you in advance for continuing to practice your diligence with regards to that. Uh, Dr. Grossman, we will turn it over to you for superintendent's announcements. Super. Thank you, Mrs. Thrall. Good evening and a very special welcome to our Wells Road Intermediate School friends. We are very excited to have you here this evening. I do want to take the time to remind the board in the community, after 10 years in the role of Director of Pupil Services, Mrs. Amy Martin has decided to retire at the end of this school year. So immediately we began a national search for our next Director of Pupil Services. So this evening, I'm very excited to announce that Mrs. Angela Aaronworth will be the Granby Public Schools next director of pupil personnel services. After an extensive search, which involved family member, families, parents, administrators, board of education members, staff and teachers and central office, Mrs. Aaronworth displayed exactly what we were looking for within our profile to be our next director of pupil services. Mrs. Aaronworth comes to us as an elementary supervisor for special education in the Windsor Public Schools. And also within her career, she was the former director of pupil services for the New Hartford Public Schools. She brings tremendous experience to this role and has our complete support. We want to welcome her family here this evening. And some of you know the Aaronworth family because Mrs. Angela Aaronworth is a Granby resident. So at this time, it gives me great pleasure to bring up our new Director of Pupil Services, Mrs. Angela Aaronworth, who will assume her responsibilities on July 1, 2021. So Mrs. Aaronworth. They just have to turn it on, Angela. Hi, good evening, everyone. I am truly um, honored and excited to join the Granby Public Schools as the next director of pupil personnel services. Um, I wish to thank Dr. Grossman, the interview committee, the administrative team, and the Board of Education, not only for the time that you've spent with me over the last several weeks, this amazing opportunity, but for um, entrusting me to work on behalf of our students and families. Um, as Dr. Grossman said, I am a resident of Granby and I have two daughters. Um, so I'm fully committed and invested in the success of our schools. I'm really eager to begin partnering with our staff and our teachers and getting to know our students and families. Thank you for the warm welcome and for your ongoing support. Thank you, Mrs. Thank you, Mrs. Aaronworth. Thank you, Mrs. Thank you, Mrs. Aaronworth. We're very excited to have you, and we'll be transitioning Mrs. Aaronworth into the Granby Public Schools, and we are working with our SEPDO organization that Mrs. Aaronworth will be a featured speaker at the next SEPDO meeting in September, and I believe we have Donna Austin on the line right now. 
um, who was also, who's the president of the SEP bill, who was part of the interview committee. So we will be setting that up for the entire community to meet Mrs. Aaron Worth at the next SEP bill meeting. So thank you and thank you to our family for coming this evening. Welcome. Welcome. We honored our board members last March. Just a reminder to the community that March is Board of Education Member Appreciation Month. I can't thank this board enough for all the work that they've done and continue the great service that they do for all the residents and students of Granby. A reminder that all our budget information can be found on our website. Very excited to report, and I know our student rep Jacob is very excited, that the CIAC approved our spring sports plan with sports start practice, spring sports start, say that five times, <laughs> spring sports start practicing March 29th. And we have been told that there are going to be state tournaments. What's very important, if we all recall, that our spring athletes could not compete last year. Out of all the student athletes, they were the ones that could not compete. So Jacob and I were just talking. He's so excited to start tennis in the next couple of weeks. So Jacob, you'll have to keep us close on that. The collaborative effort with the East Granby's public schools for providing breakfast and lunch continues to go extremely well. So far for the month of March, a daily average of 200 breakfasts breakfasts, or breakfasts <laughs> and 190 lunches were served. So our partnership is really paying off. Next week, there'll be early release for all schools on Monday and early release for elementary schools on Tuesday and Wednesday due to conferences. All schools will be holding virtual conferences again. Next week, there'll be a superintendent's community conversation, which will be held on Wednesday next week, March 24th at 2 p.m. And email will be going out to the community this Friday. Mrs. Thrall and I were able to attend the virtual day on the Hill sponsored by Cape today to learn about the new legislative proposals that are going to the legislative body. A reminder that there will be a board of finance meeting on Monday, March 29th at 7 p.m here in the high school auditorium where the board of selectmen and board of education will present their budgets the town public hearing for the budget will be held on monday april 12th mrs Thrall, myself mrs robbins will be attending that meeting in person and we're asking the rest of the board members to get on zoom and mrs powell will be sending out the zoom link we are currently working on the budget edition of the vision educational supplement for the Granby Drummer, which will be sent out to the community prior to the April 12th town meeting. And just a reminder, there'll be no school on Friday, April 2nd. At this time, I'll take any questions from any board members. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Grossman. Can you just confirm that, that meeting on March 29th is here at the high school and not at the senior center? Yeah, the meeting March 29th is here. We're gonna run the meeting in our same setup. Our technology department is gonna run the meeting for the town. Thank you. Do any board members have uh, questions or comments for the superintendent's office? Uh, okay, great. Thank you very much, Dr. Grossman. Moving along, we will move on to the assistant superintendent's report with Mrs. Jennifer Persons. Good evening, everyone. It's hard to believe what we're already deep in planning for summer school. This summer, we're going to be focusing on a lot of the academic needs and working with students in, in the area of academics and social emotional uh, growth. We will be reaching out to families with invitations to attend. Unfortunately, this summer, we will not be able to offer the, the depth of enrichment opportunities that we have in the past, but we are collaborating with the YMCA and the Granby Parks and Recreation to promote their programming and we will be collaborating with them so that students who need um, to take advantage of our academic and social emotional um, offerings will also be able to attend uh, summer programming with the Y or Parks and Recreation as well. So we'll be sharing out with the community next week what the summer opportunities look like. And then following that, our staff will be reaching out to families um, to share with them a variety of in-person and virtual offerings that we can layer on in addition to any summer plans that may be going on. In addition, at the high school level, we will have credit recovery and an AP boot camp for the first time this summer for students entering AP classes. 
You may have seen several emails come in this week um, in regards to COVID cases. We have seen a slight increase in, in cases this week. And the, I just want to reassure the community that they are all out of school exposures that unfortunately are impacting our schools. Uh, we have not seen any spread within our school community. And we're reminding everyone that while we've just passed the one year anniversary of um, the beginning of this pandemic, that we need to continue to be really vigilant in our mitigation strategies. This weekend, we'll be holding the third and final first dose clinic for our education staff. And we'd like to thank the Farmington Valley Health District for their collaboration. And I wanted to share also that a silver lining of all of this is that we have been working very closely with all of our fellow districts in the Farmington Valley. And this is a collaborative effort in all of us um, working to offer these clinics with Farmington Valley. So it's been a really nice um, opportunity to come together with colleagues across Avon and Farmington and Simsbury through Hartford Canton across the entire valley. We are gearing up for the half day PD next week. Some of the topics that will be covered are school climate, unpacking phonics units of studies, collaboration um, K-12 and world language, and preparing for our state summative assessments. We're also busy in my office planning the summer uh, summer curriculum schedule and getting started planning for next year already. So the year is flying by despite many challenges. Thank you, Mrs. Carsons. Uh, do any Board of Ed members have questions, comments? No? The quiet crew tonight. Thank you very much, Mrs. Carsons. Next, we'll have student representative reports. Um, Jack DeGray, one of our um, representatives, sends his regrets. He's upstairs at a basketball game. We'll probably hear them later. Uh, so Jacob, I'll turn it over to you to tell us what's going on at the high school. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everybody. <clears throat> This week at the high school is Spirit Week, and many students have been showing their school spirit by following each day's outfit theme. Boys and Girls Track had their first and only indoor meet yesterday, which we are awaiting the results of. Girls Basketball is 4-7 and seven and play their last game of the season tomorrow night at East Granby. Boys Basketball is 8-2 and two with a home game tonight against East Granby and Senior Night Friday against Canton. Wrestling has continued to practice after school, but we're not allowed any matches. Spring sports conditioning has started this week, and the first day of practices will be the 29th. Spring Coffee House will be held virtually two Sundays from now. Great, and I know too that we had several um, of our members of the DECA Club who did very well in their competition last week. It was held completely virtual. Um, anything else from the high school? Melissa, you look like you're ready. Hi, just a question. Thanks, Jacob. Um, do we know if Coffee House will be covered by the new digital crew that presented to us, um, Nick Boyd and company? Uh, well, some of the crew are actually performers, so <laughs> they will um, also be helping, but mostly will be other members of the audiovisual club. But it will be that new equipment that they got? Yes. Great. Definitely. That's fantastic. Thank you. That's great, both in front of and behind the camera. So anything else? Seeing none, we'll move on to one of the highlights of the night. So I believe Mrs. Greer is coming up here to introduce for the spot, uh, schools in the spotlight. Is that? Okay. Um, I think the kids were practicing up here. So come on up here and um, you're going to tell us a little bit about what's going on at Wells Road School with uh, Dr. McDonald and some of her students. So, good evening. No, no. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Um, I am super excited um, when I went to Dr. McDonald uh, with this proposal, because sometimes we have to voluntold instead of volunteering. Um, we talked about the fact that we've been working so hard as a school to really um, make sure that kids knew that their social emotional well-being was priority. Um, after the year, um, after the end of 
oh my goodness, it feels like the whole world has changed, but um, we wanted to make sure that they knew that they were taken care of because that was our first job. And of course, usual, uh, Dr. McDonald stepped in and she said, absolutely. And she had also been working with this uh, curriculum that she's going to talk about called Brain Talk. She actually piloted it over the summer and loved it. When Dr. McDonald tells you she loves something, you go with it. And so um, so I am very proud uh, to uh, bring her on stage along with three of our third graders. So today we have Max Poyer, Novi Fiacone, and Reagan Damso, who are joining her to talk about all they learned in their Brain Talk curriculum. They are ready, definitely. <laughs> Max is a shy one. <laughs> thank you. Okay. All right. Do you guys want to stand right here so we can see you? Right. Um, thank you for having us. So uh, a lot of things are happening in the social emotional realm at Wells Road School. We have um, some things that are in place for all students, which we would consider to be tier one supports. And then we have tier two and tier three supports, which are a little bit more intensive for some students that might need a little bit of extra instruction in those areas. So some of the tier one things that we have happening, we have second step, which is a curriculum delivered by the classroom teachers about social emotional learning. And then one of the things that we do at Wells, which I think is pretty special is something called minute meetings where I sit down with every single student in the building, which was 358 students this year, for one minute and ask them all the same six questions at the beginning of the year. How's your school year going so far? Do you have friends at school? Do you know where my office is? Um, is there anything you would want, want your teachers to know about you this year? We use that as a, as a type of a screener. Um, and then we have 57 students who are currently receiving tier two and tier three services. Um, which are either group or individual. And for the record, that was 10 students 17 years ago when I started here. So my caseload has gone from 10 to 57 on that number of students. Um, some of those students are on IEPs, some are on um, 504 accommodation plans, and then some are recommended by either teachers or parents um, just for a little bit of a booster on one of these things, such as coping strategies, social skills, or executive functioning, which we call school skills for our kids. So next slide, please. Um, one of the other things that we use is the zones of regulation. So having the emotions be put into four color zones. This is the way that we talk about the um, feelings with all kids in the building so that we can identify, um, we look like you might be in the yellow zone right now, uh, which would be maybe worry or too much silly or something like that. So just trying to have some easy shared vocabulary that all staff can use with kids. <clears throat> and one of the things there would be that no zone is a bad zone to be in. Right. Next slide, please. So I started the Brain Talk curriculum. I piloted it, as um, Ms. Fur had said. I did a pilot um, study with it over um, the summer with my summer school students. And I really enjoyed the program, and I thought it would be great to bring to my groups. So it's research supported, which I think is wonderful. Um, it has basis in cognitive behavioral therapy and really talks a lot about metacognition or thinking about our thinking and our emotions and um, helping that or using that to help us with our self-regulation. Um, we're basically explaining to kids how their brains work. Next slide, please. What we talk about when I talk about this with kids is that the um, program itself has um, some easier vocabulary to talk about the different portions of the brain. Um, we do talk about your brain controlling your thoughts, your feelings, and your behavior. And we are able to talk about triggers so the kids can identify those and, and hopefully um, avoid them or put some of their strategies in place when they know that their triggers are um, a possibility. We also talk a lot about strong feelings. And <clears throat> in this program in particular, we talk about being a doer versus being a decider. And that there are places for both of us. Next slide, please. So one of the big parts that we talk about with the brain is the amygdala. And the amygdala is the brain's alarm system. If you can think about um, in caveman days, that the amygdala served to keep us safe. Um, one of the things is that we talk about with the kids is that a lot of times your brain gives you a false alarm. So you're not really in danger, right? 
And so you get that feeling and the amygdala tells you that you need to keep your body safe. But honestly, you're not in danger at all, but we can put our strategies in place to deal with that. Next slide, please. And so the kids have all identified their go-to strategy or their go-to reaction when they have strong feelings is fight, flight, or freeze. And we're able to talk about that. So out of my friends here, fight, flight, or freeze. Which one? Which one are you? Flight. Flight. Flight or flight. Yeah. Second. Flight. Yeah. And I'm flight too. And I'm able to talk to kids about that. That you know, I have a tendency to try to avoid things that, that make me worried, right? But it doesn't help us because avoiding it, the thing is still there, usually like a math test or something, right? It doesn't help to go to the nurse's office when you still have to do the math. Next slide, please. We also talk about um, some of the other structures in the brain. We talk about um, a buster bam moment, and a buster bam is basically the basal structures of the brain. And um, we talk about buster being really opportunity seeking. And so to explain to kids, we talk about when things are really high up on our awesome scale, we basically will do anything to get to those. And people can have all kinds of different things that are on their awesome scale. Next slide, please. I do a lot of teaching by telling them about myself. <laughs> so these are my awesome things, right? These are things that are so high up on my awesome scale. Coffee is one of my super high awesome scale things. Um, Harry Potter, game shows on television, chocolate. So I use this as an example to say, even if I have work to do, if I'm walking through my living room and a game show is on TV, because it's so high up on my buster bam and so high up on my awesome scale, I'm probably going to make a choice to sit down and watch the game show, even though it's not the best thing to do, or to have a cup of coffee at 10 o'clock. Right. Go ahead, next slide. So the higher up that something is on your awesome scale, the harder it is to resist it. And we see this a lot of times with kids with video games, right? So they're, that's really high up on their awesome scale. And so even when there's homework to do or family time to have or bedtime, because it's so high up, it's really, really hard to resist. But we have strategies. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so we know that we can ward off some of these um, bust or bam moments by having a lot of dopamine in our brains. And we talk about that as one of our happy chemicals. So we know that there are some strategies and some things that we can put in place to really increase that dopamine level. Some of the things that we can do and that I talk about with the kids is eating a lot of protein. I spend a lot of snack and lunch times with kids and see that there's a lot of carbs in there, right? So if we have a lot of protein, it makes us less likely to, to have those moments where we're all about the pleasure and not about the consequences. Also drinking enough water, getting enough sleep, getting sunlight every day, listening to music and exercising regularly. And then one of the things that we talk about is uh, New England winters, right? So in New England winters, we don't get enough sunlight. We're typically not outside getting fresh air, which means we don't exercise, which means we don't drink enough water, right? And unfortunately, we're inside and it wants us, we want to eat carbs, right, instead of eating protein. So if we can build up all these good, healthy things, it makes us less likely to react, which is being a doer instead of being a decider. Next slide. And this should make you think of the impulse aisle at the grocery store, right? So you go through, you're tired, you're hungry, you haven't had your water in over an hour because you've been going through the grocery store with your mask on, right? And you get to the candy section and you're more likely to give in to that impulse because you haven't had all those good dopamine building things happening in your body, right? So it's very real, very applicable information that we're talking to kids about. Next slide, please. So this is one of the videos that we watch. It's short. Um, you can go ahead and play that.
So that's it. Um, next slide, please. <clears throat> so, does anyone have any questions about brain fog? Because I have three amazing experts on brain fog. <laughs> I will. Yeah. I will open that up, Melissa. You look like you were ready to have a question. Mrs. Migliaccio is right over there. Please. Hello. Thank you guys for coming. Um, that was one of the best <laughs> presentations about a really complicated topic, right? So. Um, do you guys watch that video? You've seen that video before? Yep, a lot of it. That's because yeah. I thought that was fantastic. Um, so, question for you: um, When you are in Wells Road um, and you are in class, um, do you find yourself practicing that breathing technique and like thinking that through the brain talk? Um, sometimes. Um, I get very nervous of like a task and I, and I use it. Can I use it as an example? Because we talked the other day about hockey tryouts, right? So he came to see me, he had hockey tryouts. He's really, you know, excited, but a little bit nervous about it. And we talked about what? Using some of your... Um, like if I get very nervous, I can use my five finger breathing. Um, I haven't really used it yet. Um, I don't really use it. I forget about it, or I don't okay. think about it. That's okay. Yeah. I use it a lot because I'm an emotional boy. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it was like when, like one time when Adam died, I used it and it calmed me down a little. A little down means a lot. Thank you, and thank you, both, all three of you, and Mrs. McDonald and Mrs. Greer, for coming tonight. Great presentation. Thank you. Thank you. I actually, am I on? Yep, yep. Um, I actually had a question, if it's okay, um, experts, if we could defer to Dr. McDonald, just because I have an, a question about numbers. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, this year obviously has been so tough on our kids, and you were talking about how your caseload went from 10 to 15, 57. Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering, you know, 2019, before COVID hit, um, what were your numbers? And then, you know, when did the uptick start? Um, and... Uh, and, and also, are your colleagues in the other schools, because this is such a wonderful program, and I agree with Mrs. Migliaccio, um, very interesting and explained extremely well. Um, but there are kids throughout our district who, um, who are in need of those services as well, um, not just at Wells Road. So I was wondering if you knew um, what's going on in the rest of the district. Yeah, I do. Um, so from the 10 to the 57, what I'll tell you is that, so 10 was the first year I was here. I think I started, I started in 04, right? And I just remember that was my case. So it was 10 and I don't know, it, you know, you fit in the, everything else that has to be done. And so I think that increase has been a, a pretty steady increase over that amount of time. But I think it's a very telling of where this generation is, honestly. Um, it's also, we're better at it too, right? We're better at, at, at identifying it and, and getting some supports in place for all kids. So when we talked about second step and the minute meetings and those kinds of things, that's happening across the board at Walls, be careful. There are certainly other tier one kinds of activities that are happening at the other buildings too. I know second step um, is, um, and um, responsive classroom and, and those kinds of things that we're talking about restorative justice circles and all of those things are happening across the um, the schools. So I do think we see an uptick. I would say I've seen a slight uptick this year, um, but it was more of a sort of a gradual increase. Yeah, it sure did. Thank you. Um, uh, I did have another question, but I <laughs> no. Uh, if it comes to me. Okay, yeah, sure. David or Mark, I see Mark on screen that you look like you're all set. Oh, I remembered it. Oh, <laughs> Mark's all set, so go ahead, Rosemary. <laughs> is, is Brain Talk a tier two or three 
uh, intervention? Right. So we, I think when we talk about tier two and tier three interventions, we, um, it, it's more about the service delivery and the amount of time, right? So honestly, I feel as though brain talk could be a tier one. A, a classroom teacher could absolutely deliver this amount of information. Um, the tier twos, I think the way that we've um, sort of envisioned them is it's more of a group structure. And then a tier three would be a student who requires individual time. So, and you know, all of my tier three kids also have a group. So there would be kids who I only see in group. And then there are some kids that I see in group and individually. Thank you. Great. Well, you kids certainly are lucky to have Dr. Mack at your school, aren't you? I'm, I'm, the, I'm the lucky. I wish honestly. I had someone like Dr. <laughs> Mack at my work, uh, because that would be wonderful. <laughs> Thank you for having us. This is really, it's nice to be able to share with you the things that are happening. So it's been great. And they, they're awesome. You guys yeah. have anything else you want to say? Yeah, okay. Um, I like in Brain Talk how they take parts of the brain and make them into characters. Like right here is, I forget it, but they call it mishap. And the professor is like someone in the middle who does the professor. And it's also so parts of the brain. You can learn it by characters and stuff. Um, parts of the brain, and they also like how they do on the Um, so, um, in Brain Talk, I like how they use those different like things or tools to um, teach you how to use it better and easier. What I like about Brain Talk is how uh, they see a character and they draw it and they also tell you the character that there's something. The character looks like, like basically, the character of what she says is that animal. And I really liked the Mr. Mouse one. And Miss Hip. Fun fact, Miss Hip is actually your memory. She's right. <laughs> yeah. She's the librarian. Yeah, she stores all of her memories. And we talk about that when you have strong feelings, it's hard to code those memories. So if you're having strong feelings in class, it makes it really hard to learn, right? You guys did a great job. Okay, one more thing. They're like, they love the state. <laughs> um, um, I like how they compare a mouse brain to a human brain. Um, it's a human brain does a lot more deciding. It does a little bit of doing also a lot more deciding and a mouse's brain, it's like food, blood, and alive. Um, so it does a lot more doing and you have to wait, like make a lot more decisions as a human. Um, a mouse's body is so easy to control. Um, and it's kind of like a uh, human's body uh, to put um, what like what's comfortable and uncomfortable. That's basically all a mouse does. I am so impressed that this group of experts know so much about the brain and about how it's connected to how you're feeling and how you can control it. So that was pretty awesome, you guys. Thank you so much. We're glad you could do it. And students and parents, um, if you are, you are more than welcome to stay for the rest of the uh, meeting, but you were also more than like welcome to leave at this time if you'd like. They did a great job, so thank you for being here tonight. Up next, after after Dr. <laughs> Mrs. Greer gives high fives or high elbows to her team, uh, Mrs. Greer is going to come up here and tell us a little bit about the school improvement plan for Wells Road Intermediate School. Mrs. Greer, congratulations to your students. They did an awesome job. Really, really hard act to follow there. They did be an awesome job. Thank you, guys. I will see you in the morning. Well done. Thank you. Um, I 
could not have done a spotlight without talking about those kids, the, uh, and Dr. McDonald. Um, they are the heart of what we do and why I come to school every day, why I come to work. Actually, I, I, I truly do usually say why I come to school. Um, I don't often consider it work. Um, so this is our Wells Road School update, and um, it looks in the same format as when I presented the first time, but I strategically picked um, only masked pictures this time because I guess I wanted everybody to know that we've really been having a good time, um, even in the mass. So you'll see Mr. Faber there, uh, you'll see Mia, who you may or may not know, um, and uh, Doña Alicia with two students um, who she uh, gathered because they were really interested in anime. Um, these teachers have gone above and beyond figuring out ways to make connections. What I love about that picture of um, Mr. Faber's class is you'll see um, a very small Chromebook in the middle there. That's a student who was quarantined and online, right? So <laughs> we figured out how to make things work. Um, and that's, uh, like I said, that's one of the reasons that I brought that those, some of those pictures just because it's been, it's been a year, yes, it's been busy, yes. I've talked to Jen Parsons way more than I want to most days. Um, but 123 days in, um, we are excited to be there every single day. Next slide, please. So we will start with um, this goal that was regarding building positive relationships. Um, and I've talked so much about it. Um, on this slide, though, it also talks about uh, the diverse experiences that we were trying to bring through um, books, through literature. And um, this is just really some of what's been happening. Um, I've talked a lot this year uh, about our first 50 books, and I have to uh, send a special uh, thank you to Lori Smith in our library, who put together this amazing collection of books. And every morning for our first 50 days together, once we got through our transition, she would literally deliver books to classes and you put your little bag outside the door and she would fill it with a new one. And then you put a sticker on your chart until you got all 50 and kids were talking about it and doing activities with them. But they were books from uh, Peter Reynolds and Say Something. They were books, uh, um, I'm going to say this wrong, but Soul Way um, by Lupita Nuongo's um, Sofia Valdez, Future Prez, but just titles that brought in a variety of different cultures and perspectives. Um, we, of course, are a Teachers College uh, Project District, so that means we have also wonderful resources from Lucy Calkins and all that she does, um, including books like um, Hot Day on Abbott Avenue, which talks about uh, two girls in an urban setting, uh, Front Desk, which is a fifth grade read aloud book that talks about uh, immigrant experience. Um, in addition to that, um, you'll kind of see we also have, um, I'm going to stick with books for a minute, uh, Read Across America's theme. I know there's been some Dr. Seuss controversy. Um, and we stuck with Scholastic on this one. And that picture you see kind of on the right of the screen is actually from a, it's a Bitmoji library. So like if you are looking at that as a student in Google Classroom, you could click on any one of those books and it would bring you to the read aloud of that book. And the teacher put together um, different themes within her Bitmoji library. Um, this one is uh, Cultivate Compassion. Um, but they spent so many times being creative and celebrating diversity. We also do have our uh, Dr. McDonald talk about second step programs. So that's our kind of tier one of classrooms. And what we were finding in what is um, truly a shorter day of school is that teachers were having a hard time kind of getting everything in. And I said, the thing that cannot go is um, our SEL curriculum. And so uh, every morning I do a morning message and uh, on Mondays, we now call it uh, Make a Difference Monday, Make a Difference in Your Lives and for Yourselves. Um, I make sure that we all get the message of that week. So we talk, Dr. Max showed uh, in zones, zones of regulation. We talk about that. We talk about how to get out of that. And we also go through some of the major components of the second step curriculum, just so no one misses that and we're all on the same page. It also helps with unified arts. So we wanna make sure that 
you know, the Spanish teacher and the PE teacher all know the language that everyone's using. So it doesn't just live in the classroom, but it is something that we're talking about across the school. We have buddy classes. We have some remote to campus uh, partnerships in writing. I was in on one. It is amazing. Uh, Google has set up uh, Google, um, breakout rooms, which was kind of new for us uh, this year. Um, Zoom had something similar, but Google didn't, and now they do. So that's been fun to see. And then we participated, just like I think Kelly Lane has in the Great Kindness Challenge, which has spawned uh, two fifth graders to put together. They sent me the script today, uh, the Wells Road Kindness Challenge, which will be happening after April break. Next slide, please. Um, this one is our school achievement goal, and I want to explain a little bit. One is, so STAR assessment was a little new to me, and, and I had took on a big goal for us, but it's one that I'm feeling really excited about, especially for mid-year, especially for a group of kids who kind of, you know, had a much different experience from March until the beginning of the year of schooling. Um, so what you're looking at here is we talked at the beginning of the year when I presented this about that idea of growth. What kind of growth are our students making from wherever they were? Because we can't expect everybody to be proficient if they are not even on kind of the rubric. And so I wanted to make sure that we captured kids who might not necessarily be proficient, but are working really, really, really hard. And so what you'll see right now at this mid-year point, and I know we uh, will obviously look at this data again um, at the end of the school year, but what you see here is growth. You see kids who are really close or making a, or an instruction that is making a difference. So we have kids who are already in that very high proficient range who are reading well above, above grade level. And we also have kids who are represented here who have made significant growth. So when you were, if you looked at their raw data, it would say something like low proficiency, but high growth. Um, and that is captured in this. And so based on um, our goal, you'll see that fourth grade in both areas have uh, reading and math at that, at that level, fifth grade reading, and then kind of a total, if you will, taking an average of reading. And then math is a little lower. Truthfully, we aren't surprised about that necessarily. The math curriculum has got, is going through some revision as we speak, and we're doing our best to make sure that kids continue to grow. But it's definitely an area of growth, I think, across the district. But our readers, which is truly most important um, for so many testing and, and research proves that out, if we can get kids to grade level, if we can get them reading, sometimes it takes care of some of that math stuff. So we're really excited about this mid-year point assessment. Next slide, please. And then our last goal was around kids uh, engaging and also this idea of real authentic projects. I think Dr. Mack's presentation is kind of a testament to that. When kids are taken and given information, how they apply it to what their real life looks like. Novi in as happy, that's important. How does he stay calm? How does he keep his mind engaged at school when all he's thinking about is hockey tryouts, right? And so that's real life. Other things that have happened for real life, and again, this is just kind of a sample. Um, the kids have been writing opinion and gratitude letters to lots of people. I just came, I just got an email, CC'd on an email from fifth grade class to, uh, I think it's Kevin and Fresh Picks. Um, because they are having that debate about chocolate milk, yes or no, and the teacher and the kids were like, "Well, who are we going to give this to? Who is our audience?" And they're like, "I don't know. What do you guys think?" Well, who's the who's the person in charge of lunch? And so they sent off an email to him about some of their opinions about that topic. Um, the fifth grade project and the matter unit this year was about why we're even wearing masks, like why that's important, and we put those posters that they did for their final project across. The building, um, the fourth grade did an oxbow, how the oxbow is made. And then she, we kind of flipped it on them. We were like, we want this hands-on project, my friends. We want you to get dirt. We want you to build and make and do, and they did. Um, and then there's have been the spattering of students who walk up to me or leave a note in my box and say, Miss Greer, can we? Yes, you can. 
Um, so they made things for December giving and cards for caring, which went to the senior community. And they wanted to put a Toys for Tots box. And one of my favorite stories of the year that I talked to admin about was, it was this very random day. And the kids came in with a purple mask for me and said, Mrs. Greer, we would really like to do something for Mrs. LaFam. So we are designating today as Purple Day, which is her favorite color. They got purple masks for everybody. They all had on purple, two classrooms full of purple children. And one of actually our first 50 books is called The Purple People. And they presented her with a canvas of Purple People Matter and a copy of the book, which is the most unbelievable thing in the world. Um, and I already talked to you about the Wells Road Kindness Challenge. And we're also charting goals. I put MAP intervention there because it was the thing that came out of my hands, but reading intervention, actually, if you go into most classrooms, kids can tell you their personal goals. They can show you where they started from and where they come from, um, their reading goals, all those kinds of things. So kids are really taking ownership over their learning. And that's what we want. They want we want them to be able to apply their strategies. And I think that's my last slide. Great. Ms. Thank you, Ms. Greer. I just have a, a couple of questions. Um, that last slide was talking about all of these authentic experiences, and it looked a lot like what we used to know as the clusters. Do you still have clusters, or is that something we probably can't do this year? Exactly. We can't do clusters this year. Um, what I like about, and I miss clusters, um, but what has been amazing about this is that kids have been in charge of the things that they've been working on. Um, so unlike clusters where you could sign up to do, you know, drawing with Miss Greer or, you know, knitting with somebody, the kids are saying to me, hey, can we do this? We're really excited and we want to lead this or that or the other thing. So this has been on them. Great. Thank you. And then I don't know if they're able to get back to that slide that you had of the, the grid. Um, and thank you. So I, my question was, is that showing us what the level of proficiency was for each um, cohort? Or is that indicating what the growth is within the cohort? So yes, um, it is. So here's what happens for that. Like I said, I probably need to be more star proficient. I'm going to work on that. But what it's showing us is kids, there are some kids who are reading well above grade level. And sometimes for that reason, um, when that adaptive test gets in front of them, so let's say I'm a year above grade level, the first time I take it every year, it's trying to figure me out. So it's going to start and build. The next time I take it, it's going to start really high. And so um, the data that you see there includes those kids who might have made a little less growth than what our 40th percentile, but they are already reading at like the eighth grade level. Um, and so it's a little bit of that, like kids go, uh oh, wait, what is this? This doesn't look like the first test. Um, and then we had really a good showing of kids who really and truly were not only high growth, but high proficiency as well, who had moved into that category, who were not there before. I think what I've learned about looking at some of this data is that for our third graders, it's the first time they walk in to take that test. So sometimes I don't have a growth report if they're new, if remote was a little trickier to doing the STAR assessment. Um, Parents are very helpful, but we sometimes we have to remind them that they can't take the test for the student child, even if they're next to you at home. Um, and so that, that data, some of that data was a little wonky. Um, but as we ferreted it out and as time goes on, I think by the end of the school year, we'll have a really clear picture of what's going on. But this is kind of where we were. And as I was kind of disaggregating some of the data and, and talking with, you can kind of see it. The good thing about SIMS, um, where, which is our kind of data warehouse, is you can usually see those blips and like, oh, wait a minute, something happened here <laughs> with this student or this, something like that. Thank you. Can, can I add on to that a little bit? Um, and just say the same thing in slightly different words, is that that number is a combination of any child who's already hitting the proficiency mark and um, students whose growth is above average. So if they're not hitting the proficiency mark, they have above average growth to show us that they're on trajectory to hit that proficiency as time goes by. Thank you. Much more eloquent. Yes, second. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, thanks, Pauline. Um, excited about the climate at your school and thank you and your staff for everything. I know this has been a challenging year. Um, on that, so when was the STAR assessment administered this year? 
This year is why well, the third week in January, I want to say. Okay. So the- is is the second time they take it in in the fall, and then the second time, which is usually when you start to see that that growth score, they take it then. Okay, so these numbers are based on January or the fall, or that's measuring the growth. Fall to winter is the growth, correct? Okay, so fall to the third week right. in January, typically. <laughs> <laughs> okay, got it. So I've learned some things, right? There's probably some high second graders who might have gone into this as well. Um, and so there's there's some interesting data when they take that growth formula. Um, but like I said, I'm, I'm, I've learned more about STAR. <laughs> so I um, would just say that obviously math is an area of focus for us. Um, that drop from fourth to fifth grade in growth um, 13 points is pretty significant. Um, it does recover some, um, and again, extraordinary year, but just from a board perspective, I know our math growth and um, addressing those problems is something that is front and center for us. So thank you. I would agree. We, Dr. Grossman and I both part, <laughs> pointed to Mrs. Parson because we've had that conversation about the math curriculum quite a bit. One thing that we need to understand is that fifth grade math standards are much different than fourth grade math standards. There's a may if you look across the state, even with a smarter balance assessment, there's a drastic difference between how fourth graders are performing and getting proficiency to where fifth grade is getting in proficiency. So it's very difficult to compare fourth grade to fifth grade because the standards and what we're asking kids to do is something that is different but one of the things that we worked with mrs Greer last week is that we need to push that number from the 70s that are making growth and get higher than that that they're making more growth throughout the year is the curriculum significantly different yes. like just give me a yes jen do you want to chime in on that sure so reading over time um builds in a more i'll say logical way so in fourth grade, you learn about how to identify a theme. And in fifth grade, you learn how to compare themes across books. In math, it can be a completely new concept. So in fourth grade, it may be adding and subtracting fractions. And in fifth grade, it may be finding ratios and percentages. So it's totally different content. And as the years go on, there's more and more content in each grade level for math. And that's why um, you'll hear our subcommittee bring forward a proposal for math in the, in the near future that talks about really making sure we're fully adequately addressing every grade level because it's just so dense. So, may I ask a question? No. Um, so if you have a student um, who has high growth but low proficiency, can you tell from the assessment uh, or estimate a target date when you think that student might be able to reach a proficient level? Um, and the reason why I'm asking is if, say in the math situation that they're going from a completely different uh, subject, um, you know, my concern would be that they have those foundations that they get in you know, this in say fourth grade and that they have those in fifth grade to then build on when they are learning those new concepts. Um, so I don't know if that's a, if that's a convoluted question, but um, it just in terms of, of being able for students to be able to hit that mark so that when they move on to the next grade, they're able to manage the new, uh, the new material. I'll start and then I'll let you add on. So um, one of the things we didn't talk about tonight is sort of what STAR is and the function of it. And it serves two purposes. So STAR, number one, is, is a screener. It's like going to the doctor's office and having your blood pressure checked. So it monitors progress of students across the nation, hundreds of thousands of students. And so it helps us to benchmark our kids and their progress against what's expected nationally. Um, so, in addition to that, STAR has a predictive ability based on lots and lots of research and data about how students will do on the Smarter Balanced Assessment based on their STAR scores. Smarter Balanced Assessment and what we do in the classrooms is more curriculum-based measure. So, a STAR assessment or a score won't tell us exactly, you know, Rosemary needs to go back and work on um, 
dividing fractions, but those curriculum based measures will. So we have to put those two things together to help us figure out who may need a little bit more help. And then we go in and we target what exactly the students need help on to make sure that there's not gaps as they build from one year to the next. So the numbers can help us make those predictions like you're saying, but we absolutely, if a student is not proficient, we want to make sure they're making more than average growth to close that gap. Sorry. And I just want to add like the growth reports that are kind of new, a new look for the entire building. Um, one of the things that they have been using fairly consistently before I got to there are individual reports. So those individual reports um, do often show trend lines, but they also sometimes show like kind of the area that is of concern. So this just happens to be one way to look at the data, but there's different reports for different things, obviously. And teachers have been using individual reports to say, oh, you know what? It also matches what's going on in the class right now. This is an area that I need to, to fill a little bit. Yeah. So if, if SBAC is more um, connected with the curriculum, um, SBAC is taken in what, March, April. So do we have assessments? I'm assuming we have curriculum-based assessments prior to that so that we're identifying whatever gaps there are. So by the time we, the students aren't getting to March and then we're just realizing that. Oh, absolutely not, yeah. And, and that's not actually doesn't happen until May. Um, but yeah, well, actually, and right after April break, we'll start working on that, but um, the actual testing. But before that, right, there's, there's a lot of that kind of work and teachers, know that best, right? They are the ones using the data, not just on the STAR assessment, but, but really working with students. It's also, um, it's a computerized test, right? So kind of speaking to, you know, the group we just had from Wells Road, there are some kids who don't test well in that way. Um, and so sometimes we get this click, 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 uh oh, what's going on? This doesn't kind of match their profile. Do they need small groups? So we're learning about all of those kinds of things within this test. Um, and that helps us in a variety of ways, right? Now we know we have to make sure our kids show their work. They can't just skip through. Do they need a small group? We actually learn those kinds of things by using this assessment as well. Thank you. Great. I think everybody all good? All questions asked? Mark, do you have a question? I do. I have a quick one. Thank you. And thank you, Pauline. The, can you just remind me, so the go, your goal was 80% of the kids achieving um, a certain growth rate. What was the baseline? You know, I gave that, I sent it in the email, but I don't have it with me tonight. So my apologies for that. But I know I gave it, it, it was somewhere in the 60s, um, so you, but I can't remember the actual number. So we've cut, we've progressed a lot is my question. Absolutely, for sure. Yeah, it was, I want to say maybe 65 or so, 66. Okay, thank you. Great. All right, thank you very much, Ms. Greer. Thank, thank you. you. And again, thanks to your Wells Road students for being here uh, earlier this I evening. Had a long Great, thank you. Okay, we'll move along to business manager's report, uh, Dr. Anna Robbins. Um, so tonight, this is fun. Uh, okay. Is this better? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, so tonight we are um, we'll review the February um, uh, statement of accounts. That's the review of our financial results. The uh, statement of accounts for February um, actually reflects the receipt of our grant funds since the Connecticut. State Department of Education um, has accepted the Granby Board of Education's application for reimbursement. So after the receipt of grant funds, the general fund forecast is over budget $65,000. This forecast is better than the previous month by $7,000. Special education is over budget $54,000, which is better than the previous month by $85,000. Regular education has a negative forecast of $11,000 and is worse than the previous month by $79,000. The fluctuation in special education is driven by adjustments to out of district transportation and tuition. The changes in regular education are due to adjustments to projections for custodial salaries 
as well as for the cost of bus monitors. Our previous month's forecasts were based on estimates used for pandemic-related grant applications. Um, and although the district forecast is better than last month, there have been movement between the categories based on the actual expenses. So with four months remaining in the school year, the district will require all funds to be encumbered where possible by March 26th. And this practice will allow the district to begin um, even more accurate forecasting for year end. Um, the balance in the quality and diversity fund is forecasted to be better by $64,000. This has not moved significantly in the last few months. Um, and our overall projection for revenue to the town is unfavorable $82,000. Um, which is better than last month by $8,000. Um, we um, continue to have a positive um, forecast in special education revenue from other towns. Um, and the per pupil expenses used to calculate these um, tuitions has been updated. I believe I reported on that last month. Um, but the, the town has received their excess cost grant of approximately $408,000. Um, and that will be adjusted to reflect changes that may occur through June 2020. Our paid up participation fees have increased slightly, um, and that reflects enrollment in spring sports. Um, and overall, um, you know, we're better than last month, and we are readjusting um, our budget um, constantly, our forecast to um, make sure we have an accurate projection for year end. Great, thank you. And I know the Finance Committee reviewed this earlier. Melissa, you look like you were ready to say something. That's correct. Please. I just wanted to give some that Jenny led the Finance Committee, um, but is not at the meeting tonight. So I will add Jenny's usual comment that questions were asked Savannah, all answered satisfactorily. So we have no issues. And thank you for your report. Thank you. Thanks, Melissa. Mark, I don't know if you had anything to add or if you're good. No, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Thank, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Okay, moving on to public comment. Um, other than the Aaronworth family, we don't have any public in, in, in the building. But I don't, has anyone on um, Zoom identified that they would like to uh, speak for public comment? Doesn't look like it. Okay, great. I'll move right along then uh, to the consent agenda. Do I have a motion? I move that the Granby Board of Education adopt the consent agenda. Second. Thank you, Rosemary. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And I don't think there's any abstentions. I think, Mark, you raised for the aye. Is that correct? Aye. Yep. Great. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Thank you very much. Old business. Um, the FY22 Board of Education budget approval. Dr. Grossman. Yeah. So this evening, I wasn't prepared for that because it's a board of education budget. Oh, do I need to say something about it? We need a motion. Correct. Oh, well, and I'm happy to move that the Granby Board of Education adopt the fiscal year 22 Board of Education budget. Correct. Second. Sorry, a second sorry. from Rosemary. No, that's okay. Sorry. That's okay, Dr. Grossman. I know we had our budget workshop last week. <laughs> it's <now> my budget. <laughs> It's now our budget, not your budget. Is that, that's right. So we did have our budget workshop last week. We worked through a couple of questions, and I think at the time um, everybody was feeling very comfortable with what we had and, and very thankful for the budget that the administration had put forward. Uh, and I, at this time, we will take a formal vote. I know I spoke to Jenny earlier. Uh, she sends her regrets. She wasn't able to join the meeting, and she was definitely very supportive of the budget. Before we vote, do we have any discussion or any comments? I do, if you want to hear from me. Sure, thanks, Mark. Yeah, I just wanted to say thanks again and um, um, how grateful I am for everybody on the team who did all the work um, to get us where we are today, um, uh, Jordan and the entire team, but also um, the members of our Board of Finance and the members of our Board of Selectmen. Um, it's a very, very difficult year. It seems like we say that every year, but this year we can really mean it um, and a lot of work and effort and many many extra hours i know went into um, getting us to the point where where we believe we can present to our constituents a, another year of a zero percent mill rate increase and at the same time um, meet the needs of our students so um, i'm very grateful for that 
And I'm going to vote yes on the budget. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Well, with that great comment, I will call for a vote. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and that's unanimous. So, Dr. Grossman, thank you for your hard work on that. I apologize for catching you off guard <laughs> uh, with that procedural, but thank you very much to you and to your administration for all of the hard work on that budget, that, and we're very proud to send that forward. Uh, moving on then, I think this is you now, Dr. Grossman, so to a rain date for the high school graduation. Thank you, Mrs. Strahl. Um, last month, you did approve the Grammy Memorial High School graduation as Friday, June 11, 2021. I'm very confident at this time, on March 17th, that this senior class will have some sort of graduation that possibly will resemble normalcy of graduation with restrictions and guidelines put in place. But by saying that, being in this auditorium with the, the graduation in the seniors, I, I just don't think that's going to happen in a way that we want to honor the seniors and this families. So I'm asking the board tonight to approve rain dates of Saturday, June 12th, Sunday, June 13th, or Monday, June 14th. This allows flexibility that if we have two days of rain, we could do it on the Sunday. If we have three days of rain, I could do it on the Monday. And if I need more, we'll come back for an emergency meeting. And I, I just want to honor these seniors in a way that I feel that they deserve. And in this auditorium, it is just not going to be the appropriate way to do it. Um, but out on our Grammy Memorial High School field would be a great way to do it. So I ask you if you wouldn't mind approving tonight three rain dates, and then we'll get that out to senior parents. Great. I will entertain a motion for that. I move that the Granby Board of Education approve rain dates for high school graduation as follows. Saturday, June 12th, 2021, Sunday, June 13th, 2021, and Monday, June 14th, 2021. Date second, thank you. Any more, any discussion on that? Questions for Dr. Grossman? Okay, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously, so um, we will move that right along. Thank you for having the foresight to have several rain dates, Dr. Grossman, or pandemic dates, or whatever they are called now. So thank you. Uh, new business, uh, Granby Heartland Designated High School Agreement. Thank you. So we are at that time that it's two years before the agreement ends with the Heartland Public Schools, and as part of the, the contract, that we signed the last time is that the superintendent of schools of each district meet two years prior to the end of the contract to see how the relationship is going. And both superintendents agree that it's a wonderful partnership that we have with the Heartland Public Schools and we'd like to enter into a, a contract. And it's been tradition that the Grammy Board of Education votes on entering into the contract. So if the board approves this, Tonight, Mrs. Thrall will sign the contract with myself as a witness, and then we will pass the contract on to the Heartland Public Schools, and then we'll have a contract that will be in effect two years up from now. And I believe you have that contract, the language in your packet. And I'll entertain any questions. And, and really, the, the only change is the date in the contract. Is that correct? And your name. <laughs> and my name, right. <laughs> and <laughs> okay. my name. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> Sounds great. Any questions for Dr. Grossman regarding the contract? No question, just a comment that this is part of our board goal of increasing revenue sources. And I also think that it um, diversifies our student body to have kids from outside of Granby. Um, our Heartland and our Hartford students are our students once they come to us and um, we are thrilled to host um, them. So thank you for moving this back along to our attention. Thank you, Melissa. I would love to ask if anyone would make the motion, please. Go ahead. There's me, your turn, maybe. <laughs> I uh, move that the Granby Board of Education approve the Granby Heartland Agreement to commence on July 1st, 2023, and end on June 30th, 2028. Is there a second? Dave, okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great, unanimous again. So thank you very much. And we'll sign that after uh, the board meeting is over. Um, 
That's still under new business. The first reading of revised policy 4118.231 slash 4218.231 drug, alcohol, and tobacco personnel. Rosemary, this is kicked over to you. So these two policies, um, one uh, is um, directed toward personnel and the other toward students. Um, are both revised policies. Um, we've had them previously. However, there has been language changes to coincide with uh, statutory changes. And um, I can't remember if this was CAVE approved or attorney approved. It was CAVE. These are, it's CAVE uh, language um, uh, has been approved. And um, we'll note things like uh, E e-cigarettes, things like that, medical marijuana, those types of issues are addressed in the policy um, based on um, what's reflected in statutory changes. So this is going to the board for its first read. Great, thank you. And just a reminder, um, past practice has been that we do three readings and approve, and we have recently been practicing the two readings. So um, if there are any questions about this policy, please direct them to Rosemary or to Assistant Superintendent Persons or to uh, Superintendent Grossman. They can answer any questions and then we'll bring it to another reading. Is that correct, Rosemary? Yes. Great. Okay. And move all along to the first reading of the revised policy 5135.5, drug and alcohol use students. That my, my uh, comments earlier apply, uh, but this, uh, policy is directed towards students only. Great, thank you. Um, miscellaneous, we'll look at um, the Finance Personnel Facilities Committee. I know Jenny usually comments out on this, Mark. I don't know if you had anything that you wanted to discuss about the meeting tonight. Um, yeah, I didn't I didn't take notes, and um, but I'm, so I'm going from memory, but um, we did meet tonight. Um, we went over the statement accounts, which Anna presented to us earlier in the meeting. Uh, we got a report on our food service program. Um, the good news is, is that with um, um, us providing uh, meals to um, East Granby, we're, we're starting to cut into the deficit in that account that was uh, caused by primarily COVID-related closings of the schools. Um, the bad news is we have a dispute with our, our prior um, food service vendor that we're trying to uh, work out and work our way through. Um, and then we also um, authorized um, the superintendent to grant leave to a couple of employees who've requested leave for the next school year. So I think that's all we did. But again, I didn't take notes. So that sounds to me like you covered. And Melissa, did you have anything to add? Or that's pretty much that's good. Pretty much covered it. So thank you, Mark. Um, moving on to other board-related reports, Crack or Cave. Mark, did you have anything to report about Crack? Uh, the Crack Council did meet very briefly today. Um, nothing really of significance to report. Um, um, uh, legislative report is, was probably in a much shorter version than what you guys got on the day on the Hill today anyway. Um, I, I will pass on though that um, uh, uh, Patrice is keeping a tracking log for education related uh, bills and um, offered to send that to us if we wanted. So if anybody uh, wants that, um, let me know and I'll ask um, Patrice to forward it on to you. Thank you, Mark. And that was a great segue. I was going to just mention the CABE um, Day on the Hill today. The virtual Day on the Hill was held this morning. I know Dr. Grossman and I uh, both attended and they did just cover legislative priorities. A few senators and representatives attended and you know, everybody reminisced about the days of when we got to meet in person, but hopefully we'll be able to do that uh, sometime in the future. Uh, Granby Education Foundation? Yes, I attended the Granby Education Foundation meeting on Monday, and they were talking about marketing strategies and new members, but we also had some time to talk about the proposal that we have regarding the video news station here at Granby Memorial High School. And they're going to go back to their executive board and talk a little bit more about the proposal. And it is my hope that Assistant Superintendent Parsons and the technology team will either bring that to you as, at the Assistant Superintendent's report on April 27th or one of the first meetings 
in March or in May, excuse me, to just talk about what we presented and to see if we can form that partnership with the Granby Education Foundation. Thank you, Dr. Grossman. Calendar of events. Uh, there's a lot of sporting activities. Jacob, I noticed especially for you. Next week, SATs for our juniors will be held next Wednesday. So good luck to you and to all of our juniors and others who will be taking that. Um, I guess any board member announcements? Okay. Action items, Rosemary. I didn't have any action items, but when we were discussing the calendar, I actually, um, if, if we're not meeting on 4-7, um, then we wouldn't be having a curriculum subcommittee meeting, which I believe we need to have. Can, can we meet for the curriculum subcommittee anyway? Yeah, so the curriculum subcommittee will still meet on that uh, April 7th. We're okay. just not going to do a board meeting on that. Right? Okay, great. Thank you. Thanks, Rosemary. That was great. Good catch. So we'll still be meeting with curriculum subcommittee. Dave, Rosemary, Brandon, great um, on that day on April 7th. And no need for an executive session. And um, so I will entertain. I move to adjourn. <laughs> Six seconds. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night.